I barely have to talk. You did my whole whole talk for me. Just kidding. Um, so how many of you went to the San Francisco summit we had late, last week? Just curious. Okay. Um, then you will know what's coming next which is a tradition of ours to do a high five to your neighbor to kind of start things off. So why don't you guys give your neighbor a high five. Chris kind of stole, stole that for me. Thanks, Chris. Um, so why lesbians do tech? Um, uh, she sort of said, I had my own tech business, I've been involved in the LGBTQ world, and I sort of found that regardless of whether or not I went to tech events, or LGBT events, <laughs> it looked a lot like this, right? Um, most times I would be one of the only women in the room, definitely the only queer woman in the room, and I just sort of felt like something was missing. I was like, I know lesbians in tech, I know lesbians in general, um, super hard to get them to come do anything, but um, you know what, I'm going to try one more time because obviously, you know, there's so much happening in technology right now. We know that women, people of color face serious discrimination in tech, and I just felt like, you know, whether it was sort of on the LGBT side or the women's side, I was just not finding my people. So. I love experiments, and um, I decided to do an experiment um, in terms of whether or not we actually exist was sort of the first question. Um, and I decided to do the experiment around providing value in three ways. First, I just wanted to connect us, right? It's not always easy to know who the other queer women are in our companies, um, at events, and um, but we know when we connect, amazing things can happen. New jobs, new co-founders, new girlfriends, um, <laughs> whatever you want, no judgment, uh, we all know. Um, and then there's the visibility, right? There's not a lot of visible role models, I mean, even on the women's side, right? The list after Sheryl Sandberg and Marissa Mayer sort of, like, who else can you think of besides those two people in tech? Like, the list isn't very long. And then you add queer women to that, um, and again, there's just not a lot of visible role models. I think the list of the seven out gay CEOs are all white men. I think there might be one um, gay man of color. But, you know, we can do more in terms of visibility. So that was our second piece. Um, and then we sort of, you know, we want to be a part of the larger conversation around increasing women in tech from a pipeline perspective, but also a leadership perspective. Um, you know, I go to a lot of events, and I just sort of felt like the queer uh, voice was missing. Um, I can't count the times I heard people sort of talk about lean in and husbands, and it's a little thing, but you know, for us it's different. Uh, we don't have uh, the husband at home doing the work. Um, and so we basically just started doing happy hours. Um, we had one in San Francisco about two years ago now, so we officially had our two year uh, birthday. Um, and about 40 people came to the first one, and by the second one we had 80 people, and by the third one we had 100 people. Um, and then this crazy thing happened. People just started like emailing me and like being like, can we have an event here? And I just kept saying yes. You know, I'm, I'm a big risk taker. I think we should all take more risks. And I was just like, you know, I'm going to keep saying yes um, until we figure out hey, what to do with this um, and until, you know, my business started uh, feeling the pain of that a little bit, which it did later. But, um, uh, and then this sort of got to be this thing where people wanted value besides happy hours, right? They're all loud, we can't hear each other, it's like ooms, 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 like, <laughs> it's true, right? We're like, what do you say? Like, yeah, we should totally hang out, I can't hear you. Um, <laughs> the thing about happy hours is that they're free and they're really scalable. So, you know, we had to figure out how to provide more value and also sort of create a revenue stream. And so it was clear that people wanted deeper, more meaningful relationships, and so we had the summit last year. Um, and we had 800 people come, right? I thought like if we had 200 that it would be a huge success. Um, and then all of a sudden ticket sales just kept increasing and we hit 800 um, people. Megan Smith came, Kara Swisher, um, a lot of the great people showed up. Um, and then we had an event in New York last year. Um, and then we did an event at the White House, which was amazing. I got to interview Megan Smith. And then, so weird, right after that they hired her to be the CTO, which I thought was sort of, you know, timing. Uh, pretty pretty uh, coincidental. Um, and then we had an event last week, which we officially sold out, 1,200 queer women and technology and the people who love them. Um, and we reached 8,000 members worldwide. So it's clear that uh, we exist, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so a little pause, we did our first highlight video and I thought I'd share it. I made it a little shorter for you guys since I only have 10 minutes, but I'm gonna show you guys our video and then I'm gonna get into sort of how we created this, this community. Sound needs to go up. Oh my god, there's other you did lights that check. <laughs> oh, that would be five people. <laughs> I really was genuinely surprised at first, though. A little higher. Oh, there are going to be ten people there? I thought it would be like 80 really irritating lesbians in the room. script or something like that. <laughs> well, I always knew there were lesbians who tech. 
<laughs> Two years ago, we had a happy hour in San Francisco. Like, 40 people showed up to our first event. By the third one, we had over 100 people. Wow, uh, we have a critical mass. There was this buzz, this electricity and this capability and this match to what's needed. It was a group that did not look all the same, um, which is exciting anywhere I go. And then we ended up selling out the venue. And I get to this, this theater, and it was full of lesbians. Like, it was fascinating. And then this <laughs> crazy thing happened where people, you know, in other cities, in other countries, um, started emailing me. Let's do something in Austin. Let's do something in Seattle. London, why not? Lesbians in Tech last year literally changed my life and the whole story of our company. Our user base doubled in the space of, like, two days and then doubled again in two weeks. We had offers of investment. Before I found the Lesbian Tech community, I had no positive queer women influence. This is the new generation. This is new leadership. Knowing that they existed help you feel confident to know that you can be a part of the future. Being here to me means bringing about a world in which a young woman can grow up thinking, I can do that too. And lesbians, we just, we run things, so. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think? Good? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. If you want more of a Kara Swisher and Nate Smith. Um, so how do we do this, right? I mean, I get asked all the time, right? Whether you're talking about hiring, or you're talking about building an LGBT group that has more than two women involved, um, right? I mean, it's a, it's a true thing. Most LGBT groups ask me, like, how did you get women to show up? And so I just want to kind of go over some of the things that you should be thinking about, whether you're thinking about hiring, whether you're thinking about building community. Number one, leadership. I cannot stress this enough. If you, you need to think about what you want to represent and then you need the leadership team to reflect that. It sounds simple, but it is not. And so many people fail at step one. If you don't do this first, you really are facing an uphill battle after that, to be honest. So if you're building an LGBTQ group, you better have trans people, you better have bisexual people, you better have people of color, and you better have women involved, like just period. Um, because honestly, we're already looking to see if it looks like us. I mean, I look at every website. If you don't have women and people of color on the website, like I'm probably just not gonna get involved. And that's just the reality. And we need to be a little more intentional about that. So that's step one. Um, we, need to, we have to create a culture of showing up. We have to show up for ourselves. Uh, we have to show up for other people. Um, Chris talked a lot about networking and the value that you get. You get so much value just for showing up. And I think it's something we take for granted, even in terms of ourselves. You know, saying yes to a speaking gig. Someone told me that they spend five times the amount of effort to get queer women to do speaking roles than gay men. And I told them, well, you haven't emailed me yet, but it's not <laughs> part of it. Um, but really, you know, I do think we need to show up more, right? Um, gay women, like, I love us, but sometimes we're like cat, a glass of wine, and we don't go to things. And it's a reality, and um, it's a reality of, of, of life, and I think we need to be a little more intentional about that, but also kind of back to the leadership point, that matters, right? I mean, we have 1,200 people in the Castro, and it's because we started from a place of providing value to women. Um, in terms of showing up, I want to tell a quick story because I'm really excited about this. Um, three days ago, I invited Megan Smith to sit at my table for the Emily's List Gala, and um, I thought she'd already be invited. I was like expecting her to say no. And she was like, sure, I'll come. And she just said yes. And then she came. And during a break, she was like, come on, I want to meet you to uh, introduce you to some people. And I was like, OK. In 10 minutes time, she introduced me to Valerie Jarrett, Kamala Harris, um, Maura Healy, for those of you that are in Boston. Um, and then she introduced me to Hillary Clinton. And she didn't just introduce me. She said, this is Leanne Pittsford. She's the founder of Lesbians Who Tax. She just had a 1,200-person summit in the Castro. She made it all about me. Everyone was engaged. They were listening to her. I mean, they already have strong relationships with her, so it's not like, you know, people know who Megan Smith is. But I was just so impressed by the level of confidence that she sort of had. And she just smiled. And, and I know very few women that would do that. And we really need to show up for other women. And I think Megan Smith is a great example. And I just, we just need to do it more. Even if we're scared that we're going to look bad, that we're going to look stupid, that the other person is going to mess something up, just, just show up for more women. Um, so I just wanted to share that. Oh, and then Hillary asked me, she was like, so how are you going to top 1,200 lesbians? And thank God I didn't panic. <laughs> um, and I, without missing a beat, I said, you know, honestly, I think the only thing that would do it is if you spoke next year. Mm -hmm. and, uh, And laughed and you know kind of went on her way but um, I still don't know what my number two answer would be by the way like 1300 lesbians I don't know um, the other
other thing I want to know is important to give first, right? Um, I think you know a lot of times in community, if we want you know more representation, um, we have to we have to give first before we ask for something. So you know I was supposed to go on vacation uh, for this. I just finished my summit, and you know what? I changed my mind in part because Matt, the executive director, he showed up for Lesbian to Attack all day. Like he didn't just pop in; he was there. And obviously, I wanted to hang out with you guys too, but. <laughs> I think it was really important what he did, and I would love to see that from more gay men, to be honest. Um, and regardless of what you know, sort of group you're trying to provide value for, you have to show up first for them. And so just, just think about that. Um, so what does inclusion really mean? Um, we have to be intentional, right? Um, this year, um, I sort of, I do all the speaker stuff, and um, I try really hard to have diverse people, diverse voices. We're obviously, we're called Lesbians Who Tack, but it's for queer women. Um, we use it in the tagline. It's, you know, we can talk about that over the drinks. Um, but, you know, I sort of noticed that like a month out, I was just a little more white, to be honest, than I wanted to be. And I realized I wasn't being intentional about it. And so I really sort of refocused. And I think it's something we're a little awkward about in terms of diversity. Like, we love to live in this culture of fairness and everyone has an open playing field. But the truth is to really represent diversity, we have to be intentional about it. Um, and this year we had 50% um, uh, people of color speakers, so, which is, you know, something really, 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 really valuable. Um, so what's next for us? I'll go through this really quick. I'm a team of one, I'm hiring someone, so I know all of you are amazing. You guys are interested, in June we're gonna hire someone. Um, and then we're gonna do a media and finance focused summit. It's still gonna be tech, don't worry, um, but it's gonna be a little more media and finance focused in New York in the fall. Uh, we know New Yorkers are a little more structured. I joke around and sort of say, People in San Francisco, they have like an app idea, and they're a teacher, and they're like, I'm in tech. Um, not so much in New York, but that doesn't really uh, go the same way. If you're like in IT at Bank of America, people are like, I'm in finance. I'm like, what? <laughs> and then we're gonna raise $50,000 uh, for queer, queer women to learn how to code. So if you've been thinking about learning how to code, find me, we're gonna sort of do a lot of PR around this in the next couple months, but we really wanna increase, um, obviously, women, queer women, people, people of color coders. So that's gonna be a part of this year's journey. Um, and then we're gonna do a lesbian strike on a plane because I love to travel. Um, so we're gonna do a mini European summit in Berlin. So we're gonna take a big group with people and go over to Berlin this summer. So if you guys love Berlin like I do. Uh, <laughs> um, what do you think? Testing out the name. Testing out the name. So I've done a lot of mentoring programs. I personally don't believe they work super well because it's hard to have urgency and people are like, I want to mentor, but then they never use them and like coordination and schedules and all that stuff. Um, so I sort of believe everyone's got one day um, and that in one day you can build a solid relationship, you can learn a ton. I think the name is catchy, but honestly I'm still open to ideas if you have something else. Um, but it's basically going to be a shadow program where we put queer women with anyone that's an expert and wants to get involved with um, our organization. So. Um, and then it's sort of up to you guys. You know, I'm going to be out, out there, and I'd love to hear your ideas. We're really, we really believe in figuring out what you guys want and how to make it happen. I'll pretty much try anything once. So I'm open. Um, thank you guys for your time, and I'll talk to you soon.